Mona Lisa is all about me. It's all about you. It's all about our stories. The stories that never get told, but ought to. Whereby water transportation does not make financial sense, it makes economic sense. I was there for two and a half hours on the floor. Nobody attended to me. If we don't take care of the poor, the poor will take care of us. It's about getting at the root of things and hearing from the horse's mouth. We have 15 public hospitals to make them affordable. In the whole of Africa, we are bigger. You know, Nigeria, we sleep, eat, dream, fashion. Those with the uh, financial backing don't see fashion as an investment, which makes no sense. If they do it for free, they won't have money for the next case. Mona Lisa is about real life and the real lives, yours and mine. Make a date with Mona Lisa and together let's ensure that the important stories get told. Welcome to another sumptuous edition of Mona Lisa. I say that deliberately because today we'll be delving into matters concerning the food industry and specifically our restaurants. We will be exploring and exposing the scope of development of this industry and looking at how our restaurants are rising to the challenge of feeding our appetites for good cuisine. For now, let's begin with the statistics layout. Nigerians spend 56.4% of household income on food, the highest in the world. This is according to one of the latest figures by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. In other words, Nigerians spend over half of its household income on food. There are only nine other countries that spend over 40% on food. Four of them are in Africa and four are in Asia. The Association of Fast Food and Confectioners of Nigeria, an umbrella body of quick service restaurants, has revealed that the Nigerian food industry is estimated to worth over a trillion naira, with the fast food segment gulping over 250 billion naira, and this number is still expected to rise in the future. Euromonitor, a leading research firm, also stated that the Nigerian food industry is one of the best performing industry in the country, despite the economy downturn and huge decline in consumer spending power over the years. In more recent years, we see the restaurant business also coming into its own, especially in a thriving metropolis like Lagos, where there is no shortage of new indigenous and continental food outlets, nor the demand for them. I imagine much of that was stimulating information. Now for further food for thought as we lay out the issues further in a report. Food is what is known as an essential commodity, in season and out. Our people have an expression, man must whack. We visited the local booker to see if business was flourishing and if they faced any challenges. I've been in food business about 10 years ago. It's not easy. The way things are just changing in the market. It's not the, the way we, we used to buy it about 10 years ago. Uh, when I lost my last business, I, I went to a restaurant and eat. I observed that if I start off this business to help me, and my family. I cook about nine pot of soup, different soup. Starting from uh, 2014 to 15, oh, let me just say about 400 customers in a day. But since, the, since 2000, 2015 to these days, the customer reduced because the way Nigeria is today. In the cosmopolitan city that is Lagos, there is no shortage of variety in both the demand and supply food chain. Indeed, just as local food eateries have their market, so foreign food has its market too. We dropped in on Z Kitchen, an upmarket restaurant, to compare notes on what makes for a successful restaurant business. Who knows, we may happen to chance upon the odd Nobel laureate. And yes, we are a restaurant uh, that is inspired, if you want to say, by uh, our travels, my wife and I, uh, 
the different countries we've lived in and uh, we try to place that on a plate and serve it to our customers. What do customers want? What is the secret to keeping them happy? I come here almost every day. This food is quite um, homemade, it's quite homely. So unlike what you see in uh, like a bigger restaurant or no processed, you know, this is like something that is, you can make in the house. The pricing of, for the food is um, quite pocket friendly. So I had um, pound yam and okra soup and it was very delicious. I actually had um, semo and afang soup. Really delicious. My mom's cooking is better, but the soup here is actually very good. It's very nice, it's filling and it's actually large, as in when you have a plate, you are so filled up. I'm eating apple with vegetable soup and okra. The soup is standard, but the apple is very small. Zolin restaurant, though in the high end of town, could be said to be off the beaten track. A twist of exotic meets contemporary, it manages to address the inquisitive palate as well as keep the native taste buds satisfied. We caught up with the director and chief chef to understand the inspiration behind this adventure. Zolin is a contemporary and fusion restaurant. What we do basically is to use our natural herbs, our local herbs and spices to give our diners a wonderful tasting experience. So yes, we got a space here to do the restaurant. It's not on the high streets. So it has its plus and its minuses. For instance, we don't have a fantastic footfall in terms of um, walk-in customers, but we have a lot of reservations. And I think people that come here are a bit more intentional. They've probably seen or heard of us from somewhere or somebody else told them, which is like a word of mouth referral. But what we're here for really is to let the world know that African food or Nigerian food can be served in an international way. It is apparent that as diverse as food is, there is also a diversity of taste to match. We begin to note that as far as the restaurant sector is concerned, what we're seeing is merely the tip of the iceberg. Since we pride ourselves for hearing from the horse's mouth, today is no exception. We catch up with the key guests to delve into the issues raised so far. The name Zikichen, uh, I guess it's uh, the Z is, is for me and my wife, so Zena and Ziad. So I guess this is this is what the name is. Kitchen is just basically um, it. It's because of what the restaurant is, so it's very focused on uh, our kitchen, that we do things from scratch, uh, uh, from the pastas to our bread to uh, everything in between. We try to buy things whole, like uh, all the, uh, in terms of, for example, the lamb that we get, we, got, we get whole lamb. We use it all up from the neck to the tail. Uh, no, this, is, this is the first restaurant then, that I own. Uh, uh, along with my wife. Uh, in fact, I'm originally I'm an engineer. I was an engineer for 15 years. This is definitely the hardest environment I've ever worked in. Uh, hard because of the sourcing, as you're saying. Uh, but hard for me also because I am not, uh, I'm not the son of Africa. And the first time I set foot in West Africa, or anywhere under North Africa was uh, 2016 when actually the country was uh, beginning to spiral on, uh, downwards, unfortunately, economically. I, I don't know, I guess while people were almost running away from here, I was seeing an opportunity. It, it was the attraction of the opportunity of the market, uh, the potential, and uh, I guess my crazy entrepreneurship uh, ideas. So. Uh, yes, it's difficult because uh, there's a lot of restrictions from the country's uh, uh, import policies, let's say. There's a lot of ingredients that are banned. I mean, as for the lamb, for example, and the goats we use, they're local. Uh, and they're, they're excellent quality, etc. Fish is amazing here. But some things, I mean, as, as much as one would love to use everything from uh, local, but some things you can and some things you can't. It's, yeah, it's very difficult to set up business in Nigeria for for, for several reasons, let alone a, a food business. But the difficulty is also that, the, the, that the, uh, uh, the, the customer base is extremely varied. And I'm not talking about 
uh, having expats versus uh, Nigerians. I, I, in fact, I'm, I'm more focused on the Nigerian, or what I'm discovering as the Nigerian palette being extremely varied and uh, and broad and and and, and very and, and 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 from one extreme to the other. I'm not going to lie to you. I being an entrepreneur here, I'm I'm everything from the generator maintenance guy to water treatment guy to head cleaner to whatever uh, all the way up to assisting uh, accountants and 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 being the owner and chef uh, of the place uh, i get to do everything and everything and i learned a lot of these things uh, by being here zaline is a combination of both my daughter's names zohara and aline Okay. They were my inspiration for starting the business. I really wow. wanted to be of more for my daughters. Yeah. Um, yes. So tell us about this unique brand of yours, Zuline. Um, what, wh why did you decide to start a restaurant business? Is it, is it, is it good? Is it good business for you? Okay. Why the interest? Just a bit of a background. Um, I trained as a lawyer and I practiced for close to 10 years. But I had the passion in um, the culinary space. And I thought, okay, let me do something else. Let me pursue my passion. I love the law. I'm not going to leave it. Well, I've left it now for a bit, you know, but I can always go back. That's the fun part of everything. But I just thought, okay, this is the passion I have. Maybe in a few years' time, I will be unhappy if I don't work on my passion. So I decided to open Zuli. Initially, when we started, we didn't even have a signage because it's like um, a residential area. We're still trying to get our foot in and all of that. And then afterwards, we thought to put a, a signage there. So we found out that a lot of people come in based on what they've seen on the internet. So maybe our website or from a website of like food bloggers and all of that, that's how they come here. Mm -hmm. So yes, of course, we can do more in terms of marketing the business and making it more profitable. Mm -hmm. But in the last two years, it's been good. And I say that because we just was recently listed on the business day top 100 um, most profitable SMEs in Nigeria. So I thought, you mean, they came and they checked our books and they said, we are not doing badly for a business that's two years old. What lessons have you learned along the way? And also, um, how have you been able to circumvent some of these challenges you must have faced trying to set up a different, uniquely, unique, yeah. based <laughs> restaurant? So yeah, um, for one, I'll say that for somebody who wants to go into the restaurant business, you know, you have to, passion is not enough. You have to sort of get schooled or trained in a particular way. I went to school as well in terms of this and I was very particular because we can school abroad. I, I mean I have a university, I have a, a master's from the University of London but it doesn't really fit into our Nigerian scenario. They don't have like generational issues for instance or staff, our, the staff culture abroad and here is different. You know? So I had to learn and I got a scholarship to also study at the Lagos Business School where I did some entrepreneurial studies and I found out that it was very useful you know, in terms of setting up the business and then dealing leadership. Everything they say rises and falls on leadership. So how you lead the staff, how you let them know how to handle the customers. What's your unique setting uh, point? Is okay. it the, 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 the ambience, is of it course, flowery? So, right. <laughs> the, <laughs> the thing the... is, you know, a lot of restaurants I find is that maybe they're focused on one area of maybe the food or maybe, you know, so for us, we have found three things that works, and that's our unique selling. Three of them together has made us stand out, and that is the quality of the food, the ambience. So we have the wonderful garden and just how you feel when you're around us. That is the ambience, and then the customer service. What is the advice you would want to give to people who want to start a restaurant business? For running a business, you, ha you have to like project. You have to have like a running cost for like a year. It could go either way. So it's just like with everything in life, you know, you, you make your best efforts to see that business come forth. But you also have to be realistic in terms of economics. So do you like yellow? <laughs> I see that everything around me is yellow, sunlight, yeah. bright and beautiful. All things yes, bright I love and beautiful. Yellow. <laughs> and you love green. Yes, I, I love, love green. I love yeah. olive. Welcome, Salome, to Mola Lisa. Welcome to the Wheat Baker. <laughs> So tell me what is the secret of the success of this business and how long has it been going on for? Um, the bit success of our yes, of, the secret, yes. Of, the our secret yes, of your success is our people. 
so it's our staff, it's our service. But in order to provide those services, it's the staff that provides the services. But we've also invested highly in our staff. My name is Yanni Mellis. I'm the executive chef at the Wheat Baker Hotel. We are responsible for the quality and the variety of the products we put out in food. We serve, um, obviously, Nigerian, the local cuisine, and we also serve a wide range of continental cuisines. Uh, well, to work at the Wheat Baker, it's amazing. Their attention to um, detail, to um, quality of service and also to training of the staff is exceptional which makes it a pleasure for, um, for us to work here. Um, it's, I look at running a kitchen as a, um, a, chor a choreographed dance. Everybody's got to um, do their own bit at the right time in the right, in the right place. I've been in Nigeria now nearly nine years. So over the nine years I've, you know, we've gained immense experience with a steep learning curve from when I came here as somebody who had never been here before. Um, to now, and this, the, the secret and key behind it is to um, cultivate and develop strong bonds with your suppliers. So you learn to trust them, they learn to trust you. Uh, the secret to my success definitely is our team. Um, I wouldn't say it's anything else other than that, just having a great team and I have to be very thankful for them. Before we started, we had six months consecutive training for the staff. Um, the challenges have changed over time. One of our biggest consistent challenges has actually been power. Um, but in the times of Ebola, that was a challenge because no one was going out. I know you've carved a niche for yourself. And what is that one thing that attract customers like me, for instance? Service. It must be service. <laughs> I know service. your service is, is, um, is For nice every survey know. we do, for every um, recommendation we get, the response has always been service. And I think we're great at um, it. And Prophet, your opinion, what do you think other restaurant business should emulate? What do you think there should, should be the standard um, 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 ways they can maintain fantastic restaurant business and hotel hospitality business in Nigeria? Um, take care of your staff. Take care of your staff. If you train them, if you pay them, on, um, pay them well and on time, um, give them the right tools, so give them the nice uniforms, let their parents be well, give them, like here at WeBaker, we ensure we have showers, we make sure that everyone has deodorants in the bathrooms, towels, so they can shower. Imagine coming in from traffic, it's a hot day in Lagos, after trying the commute and you just go into work. But here we encourage people to have a shower before your shift, you can have a shower after your shift. So little things like that, but if you pay attention or feed into the people, your business would thrive because people know when they are invested in. People appreciate being invested in. I foresee a lot of interesting restaurants coming up in the sense of concepts. And Nigerian cuisine will become very popular with our jollof rice, even though it's not originally ours. But those foods need to start coming out where we begin to make our food appealing visually. So I feel like there'll be better plating so that it is approachable because no one wants to approach a, a huge bowl of meat everywhere and you don't know where to start. <laughs> thank you so much, Salome, for thank coming on the show. Much. And thank you for giving us an insight of what it's like to run a be beautiful, huge business like this as the Wheat Baker has done over thank the years. You so thank much you so for much for coming. Thank, <laughs> thank you. This is one edition of the journey you wouldn't want to be told about. It is my joy to welcome the five-time Special Olympics champion in swimming, Adedemola Roberts, and of course, his mother, Alero Roberts. Alero Roberts is a senior lecturer of the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, Nigeria, with multiple portfolios. But today, she's here in the capacity of a chaperone. Hello, Adedemola. Welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Having us, ma'am. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you become used to people, you know, telling you that, um, or congratulating you of being the mother of a five-time Olympics champ champion? No, absolutely not. It's not a feeling I ever want to get used to. I'm certainly not used to it. Aww. I'm still enjoying and reveling in the success in the, hmm. in the fame and the glory that hmm. he has brought to the family. How did it all begin? <sighs> that is a long journey, a journey of 34 years now. Can you imagine when oh. 
we started this journey and when we were given, I still clearly remember we're coming up to the, literally 34 years that we got the diagnosis that he was born with Down syndrome. And um, we got the diagnosis around about, uh, well, November of the year he was born. born. Yeah, and we had had to go to the UK to get this diagnosis. At the time, we couldn't do mm. chromosome typing mm. in, in country, mm. you know. And um, it, 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 was, it, was, it was a surreal moment because I was actually advised in the UK at that time that I should leave him behind to be put into an institution, that they, they didn't feel that we had the facilities in Lagos to, to manage his condition. And so that started the journey, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. with the grace and the mercy and the favor of God, we've walked every step, a lot of lows, a lot of side turns, a lot of twists. But by and large, it's been absolutely amazing because mm -hmm. I can look back on the entire journey and, and know that the hand of God has been with us every Amazing. step of the way. Amazing. You know, I can't Amazing. deny that there have been many nights of tears in I pillows know. and know. You know, many nights of frustration and mm. people telling you you ought to do this or you shouldn't have done that. Mm. You know, and mm. good friends, you know, mm. sort of turning their backs, sort of speak. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's been the little bits of discrimination that do 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 hurt they do hurt you know every now and again but you know i think with the success of his sporting ability when and was that coming to that now when yes. did you discover that he could this was where he was tilting towards hmm very good question this was totally and you i'm not ashamed to big up two institutions and i don't care what you say about advertising laws i'm bigging them up big time the children's developmental center and Special Olympics Nigeria. Hmm. And again, it is just the work of God because the lady who runs the Children's Developmental Center, who was a senior to me in medical school, hmm. also has a son who's uh, got intellect developmental disabilities. And she hmm. says, would I be willing that, you know, her son is going to be a guinea pig, would I be willing for Damola to be a guinea pig? She wants to set up the adolescent unit of hmm. the CDC. And I said, well, yes, because by that time he had outgrown the primary school he was going to, and um, we needed to do something a little different. Mm -hmm. And so while he was there, you know, Special Olympics Nigeria came along and they said, well, they want a team to be the emerging program for Nigeria. And this was the Special Olympics in Ireland in 2003. And truthfully, when people, when people like Damola with intellectual disabilities, you know, outgrow the standard educational institution. Mm. Sport is really the only thing left for them to do in which they can excel. And the issue is that you've got something that he's doing, that he's, he's, he's focused on every day, mm -hmm. they've got training every day, mm -hmm. they've got periodic competitions, mm -hmm. and they are applauded. Mm. So he was on the emerging program for Nigeria in 2003, and that was for athletics at the time. But it introduced us to the whole thing. And so by 2011, it was, he was, um, you know, the, the, the emerging program had to grow organically. And so mm -hmm. they were adding on more sports. And mm -hmm. one of the sports they wanted to add on was swimming. For that time, has he ever swam? Oh, yes. He loves okay. the water. That's we're members it. of the Koei that's Club it. and okay. Sunday swimming okay. that's, was, that's, was that's, just that's it. So, but he couldn't swim. He could play in water and absolutely loved it. When they approached us and said, you know, would he be a part of the swimming team? I had to admit that he didn't know how to swim. You know, yes, he's used to playing in water, but he didn't know how to swim. And then my, my, my then driver, because then he was my driver, I, I, and I, I, I asked him and I said, well, you know, you're from Ekbe, can you swim? Mommy, people from Ekbe, Ekbe they can Ekbe, swim course, before they can walk. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> And he took on the role of um, Damala's coach, Mr. Abayo, Ms. Sikirua, mm -hmm. and Ifo Oshie. Mm. Took on the role of Damala's coach and got him from playing in water to where we are today. Fantastic. 2011, he went with the mm. team. He took the team to Athens. Mm. And Damala came back with a gold medal. All the, the team of four came, all came back with medals. Damala got his first gold. Fant Sorry to cut you, but how has this affected you as the person and as the mother and to the family, entire it's, family? It's, it's vindication. 
pure and simple. It is vindication. I like that word. It's vindication. It is vindication. My husband, my children, my sisters, my siblings. There was a reason why he came that is it. to this world. As a nation, what do you think we're doing right? And what do you think we're doing wrong when it comes to children with special needs? Are we there yet? We're not there yet. And um, we... shall I start with the things we're doing right? We accept people with developmental disabilities. We are more accepting than most. We, we do have an inclusive society. What we are doing wrong, we still have a lot of parents and family members in denial because it's all right to accept it when it happens to somebody else. But we, we're not so accepting when it happens to us. And, you know, the issue of religiosity has a role to play because um, we've got a situation Tell whereby... Tell me about it. Yes, where, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, they feel mm -hmm. that they can faith it mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. And that's not, mm -hmm. that's not strictly mm -hmm. true because you've got to accept mm -hmm. your limitations mm -hmm. to be able to accept help mm -hmm. to overcome those limitations. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Sadly, this has come to an end. I wish I could keep you here all I'm day. Here all the time. Honestly, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, ma you, so thank much you. Thank, thank you so much, Ade. Could you give me a high five? Bye. Could you do that? Yay! Congratulations <laughs> one more time. Food is one subject that never fails to inspire. In Oliver Twist, the musical, The Hungry Often Sang Food, Glorious Food. Nigerians love their food of that there is no gainsaying. However, are we positioned to explore and exploit this a captive market whose appetite is always picked? Whatever the season, man must chop a bee. We explored the Booker world whereby production and consumption are in steady supply. And even there, we found that they have their own constraints. We explored the market of a foreign native restaurant owner targeting the higher end of the market. And with them too, we discovered that the challenges were remarkably similar. The need for good hands in the kitchen and getting good produce. We visited a successful restaurant business within an equally successful hospitality provider, and we discovered that the service ranked almost as high, if not higher, in their priority when it came to the secret of their success. Just when we thought our palate had had more than enough tantalizing, we encountered a niche contemporary African restaurant with an exotic twist, and a theme began to emerge. Attention to detail and the avoidance of corner cotton. I gathered that to run a successful restaurant business in less than efficient business environment, you would have to create your own mini ecosystem, develop a culture of doing things within the walls of your food haven, and watch your customers come back again and again and again. From food for the belly to food for the mind, I have found this to be a nourishing addition on several levels. Haven't you? Till next time when we are geared up to bring you a flavor-filled menu, remember, you don't need a silver fork to eat good food.